Hi, this is Manos Perlakis, and this is video 22.4 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video discusses some of the special issues when treating small and large vessels, as well as long lesions. These are the 14 steps of percutaneous coronary intervention. We'll discuss each one of them and how it applies to treatment of these specific lesion subgroups. When it comes to planning, monitoring, pharmacology, and access, this is done as per standard practice. There are no special considerations for the size of the vessels. However, when it comes to engagement, there are going to be issues when engaging both small vessels as well as large vessels. For small vessels, the issue is that the catheter may cause dampening upon engagement, and that should be appreciated because if not, if there is injection while the pressure is dampened, that can lead to dissections as shown in this small non-dominant right coronary artery. Most of the time, this is not a big deal because those vessels are not very large and supply a small area of myocardium. However, they should be best avoided. A difficult issue has to do with engaging large coronary vessels. The issue there is to be able to adequately visualize the vessel, and that requires good engagement to allow good contrast injection and full opacification of the large vessel. When it comes to angiography, before this is done, it is particularly important for small vessels to give nitro to ensure maximum dilatation of the vessel, and for the large vessels to ensure good filling by good engagement as well as good injection of contrast. These are examples of how nitro can affect the appearance of the angiogram. There appears to be a lesion here in the circumflex that disappears after giving intracoronary nitroglycerin. The same thing shown on intravascular imaging with OCT, very small area before giving nitroglycerin. However, after giving nitroglycerin, the same area, uh, the same area of the vessel becomes much, much larger. When the vessels are particularly large, for example, in the case of aneurysms, which are defined as um, the, um, a dimension of the artery more than 1.5 times the reference dimension, then it can also be very difficult to visualize the distal vessel because the contrast tends to hang out in the aneurysmal segment, providing poor visualization distally. Moving on to performing percutaneous coronary intervention, special considerations for small vessels is that they do have increased restenosis risk if PCI is done. However, the outcomes are also not as good when bypass is done. Uh, performing bypass in small vessels has higher risk of subsequent graft failure. When it comes to large vessels, larger stents may be required. We currently have a 5.0 millimeter resolute onyx stent available. And it is important to also know the post-dilation limits of all the stents. When it comes to long lesion, the risk of restenosis is increased, which should be taken into account when deciding between PCI versus surgical revascularization. In terms of wiring, for small vessels, workhorse wires are usually used, carefully advanced to minimize the risk of dissection, whereas in large vessels, sometimes the wires tend to prolapse, this is wiring through the previously shown aneurysm of the proximal right coronary artery. The wire tends to coil inside um, that aneurysm. However, eventually, a polymer jacketed wire along with a microcatheter was successfully used to get through the aneurysm and to the distal right coronary artery. So for larger vessel, larger bends may be needed in the tip of the wire, as well as use of a microcatheter, either a standard microcatheter like the Caravel, Corsair, or Turnpike, or an angulated uh, microcatheter. Moving on to lesion preparation, when it comes to small vessel, as well as large vessels, intravascular imaging is important to accurately determine the size of the vessel. Quite often, the small vessels are larger than they seem, and uh, for the large vessels, the visual estimation of the vessel size can often be wrong, and intravascular imaging can help optimize this and avoid errors either larger or smaller size. In terms of small vessels, it is best to avoid atherectomy, especially if there is tortuosity. Size the balloons carefully to minimize the risk of dissections. Sometimes the plaque modification balloons may also reduce the risk of dissections. And some have proposed use of track-coated balloons as a primary therapy without stenting in those small vessels. When it comes to long lesions, 
Good preparation is important to reduce the risk of restenosis because often long stand length is required. Moving on to stenting, the smallest stand currently available in the United States is the 2.0 millimeter onyx stand. In general, the length of the stand should be minimized to minimize the risk of restenosis. When it comes to larger vessels, the larger DS is 5.0, the resolute onyx. The sizing, importantly, should be based on the distal reference. If there is an aneurysmal segment, it should be based on the distal reference and not on the size of the aneurysm. And then the stand expansion limits are important. We'll show them in the next slide. When it comes to long lesions, there are now longer DS available. There is a 48 millimeter synergy dry colluding stand. These are the post dilation limits. The synergy, as well as the resolute, that are 4 or 4.5 and 5.0, can be post dilated up to 5.75, whereas the 3.5 and 4.0 millimeter Zion Sierra can be post dilated all the way up to 5.5. Very important to know these post dilation limits when there is large discrepancy in the size of the vessel. For example, in the case of coronary aneurysms. Arterial closure is done as per standard practice. Physiology can be very useful in both small and large vessels. Often the large vessels may appear more stenotic than they are and physiologic assessment can help determine the true significance of the lesion. And the same for small vessels, even if there is a significant lesion in a small vessel, it may supply such a small area of myocardium that the physiologic indices may not be in the abnormal territory. Also, it helps determine whether there is a focal lesion or diffuse disease when planning PCI. Imaging, once again, is critical for both small and large vessels and for long lesions for sizing the vessel and choosing the diameter and the length of the stent. Often uh, there is um, uh, positive remodeling and the larger stent than a geographically apparent can be used, whereas for large vessels the true size uh, of the stent can be estimated. When OCT is done in large vessels, it is important to fully fill the vessel with contrast, which can be challenging requiring heart injection or an automated injector system. This is an example of IVUS in the case shown before with the aneurysm. We can see that the vessel becomes really big, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0. And actually, when performing IVUS in very large vessels, then the diameter of imaging should be increased so to allow full visualization of all the walls of the vessel. But once again, it is extremely important to perform intravascular imaging to choose the size of the stent which again is based on the reference segment and not on the aneurysmal part of the vessel. And finally, hemodynamic support is done as per standard practice. So to summarize, small and large vessels and long lesions can be challenging to treat. And uh, for the small vessels and long lesions, they do have a high risk of restenosis. Giving nitro is critical for performing in geography and also intravascular imaging can help uh, better determine the size of both small and large vessels. Lesion preparation should be done with caution in the small vessels because of the risks of dissections. And quite often, balloon angioplasty alone or dry-coated balloons, if available, may be the primary treatment strategy for those small lesions. Standing should be optimized in all those subgroups to reduce the risk of restenosis. And both physiology and imaging can be very useful, both for determining the need of PCI and the hemodynamic significance of the lesion, but also for optimizing the final and geographic result. Thank you.